You've been seeking answers from every dermatologist, doctor, and all over the internet wondering what on earth this unbearable skin issue is. You know something's up, and you've been suffering and silenced for far too long. This podcast is going to bring awareness to the brutal reality that is topical steroid addiction and withdrawal syndrome. It will give you practical mental and physical tips to help you along your journey and provide you the strength you need to push through each day. You'll hear from real people battling this illness, as well as experts in the field, and I'm also going to share with you what's happening as I battle and conquer TSW. You are not alone, you're not crazy, and you will heal. If there's one thing I know, it's that anyone going through this hell is a warrior. My name is Jennifer Powers, and I welcome you to TSW Journey to Healing. Hey, really quick, I thought this would be a really great resource for anyone who may be going on a trip where they're going to be in the sun, or maybe you even live in a part of the world that is bright with sunshine. You want to get out there. You want to be outside. You want to experience the sunshine and the healing benefits that can come from that. But you're a little bit nervous, right? And rightfully so. Your skin is going haywire. It's crazy. It's inflamed, super sensitive to most products. Maybe that's you right now. So you also want to know that if you decide to try to practice sun safety with sunscreen, what should you try? There's so many options out there. It can get very overwhelming. So what I did was pull together all of the testimonials, all the people in our community that have raved about certain sunblocks and sunscreens where they've had great, great results. And I put it together for you in a blog post so you don't have to search everywhere all over the internet for it. So if you want to grab that information, it's totally free. You just go to the blog, TSWJourneyToHealing.com. And in the search bar on that page, you can just type in the word sunscreen and you should see a blog post titled Sunscreen Options During Topical Steroid Withdrawal. I hope this is helpful. Okay, back to the episode. Okay, let's talk about vacationing or as my friends overseas or in Europe like to say, going on holiday. I love when you guys say that. Oh, I just love it so very much. Um... Sorry for the terrible accent there, but anyway, let's talk about it. Before we talk about it, if you're new here, please consider subscribing, rating, reviewing the show. It helps spread awareness, sharing it to anyone you know that it may benefit. I so appreciate it, and our whole community appreciates it because we want to come together and spread awareness of this horrible and preventable disease. So that is TSW. So if you're new here, hi, my name is Jen. I'm your host of the TSW Journey to Healing podcast. And in this episode, I want to talk about vacationing because in just a few days from now, I will be getting on a plane and I will be going to Mexico. And I'm so excited. I love, love, love Mexico. Been there many times. I just love the people and the food, the culture, like, oh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful place. And I've been there many, many times. But, um, I'm a little bit scared, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bit scared because less than a year ago, it was over New Year's, so January 1st, I had only been in topical steroid withdrawal for about four weeks. I just, you know, officially probably started the end of November, but I'm going with the official date of 12-1-21. So 1-1-22, four weeks later, is when I was in Mexico. Now, uh, I think it was the first time that I had experienced the zingers, Zingers, for those of you that are brand spanking new, is like the sharp shooting nerve pain that is one of those lovely side effects of TSW. And I experienced it for the first time on the aircraft. Oh my goodness, traumatic for me. Like really, I could laugh about it now. And I, when I tell stories about it, I kind of do laugh, but I can't lie, it's still very traumatic and to the point where I have like PTSD about it. And now I'm trying very, very hard for the next few days leading up to going on my trip, I'm going to try very hard to do a lot of mindset work, a lot of uh, breath work and meditation and just getting, psyching myself up to get into a really good place of excitement and cheer and not dread and nervous energy and all of that. But, you know, going from Philadelphia where I'm at to Cabo, San Lucas, Mexico, I had to take two planes. There was not a direct uh, flight. So both planes both the first and the second one, I experienced zingers. What are zingers or what was it like for me? It was terrible. It looked like I had Tourette's syndrome. Uh, I was like jolting in my seat. I could not sit still for the five hours of flying in the air. Like talk about exhausting, number one, but talk about embarrassing, talk about uncomfortable. There was nothing that I could, there was nothing I could do. Um, Nothing helped. It was, it was terrible. (laughs) Then I get to Mexico and my skin just went haywire. It went bananas. Um, 
the pool I, I noticed was at that time it was bearable. So the chlorine water of the pool that, that didn't seem to bother me too much from what I remember. Um, it didn't go in the, we didn't go in the ocean. Um, because at that time it actually was chilly because that part of Mexico is the, not, not the Caribbean side, but the, uh, West coast, I believe. So it was chilly. So but the pools were heated and nice and overall the weather was sunny and it was beautiful. It wasn't scorching hot, but it was warm. And, uh, yeah, man, it was, it was bad. I mean, like I remember trying to go and put makeup on my face and that my face did not like that at all. Um, I had itch attacks. I was scratching till I was bleeding all over. It was just, ugh, it was bad. So sorry, sorry for being descriptive there, but I'm keeping it real. And so I have come such a long way. If you've been following my journey and kept kept up during all these podcast episodes of me filling you in, then you know all the stages and things that I've gone through. I've been documenting it real time for you. But, you know, right now, knock on wood, thank you, Jesus, I am feeling good. Um, not great, but very good. Very grateful for that. And I am believing that this trip is going to bring lots and lots of healing for me. I choose to believe that. I want to believe that. Um, and I really do. I think I do believe that. So I'm going to be excited. It's only Friday to Monday, a quick little weekend getaway trip, but I, I very, very much believe in the power of the elements, especially particularly the salt water, ocean water, lake water, anything that's a natural body of water. I totally believe in the healing power of there. Now, if you've taken a dead sea salt bath, I'm a huge fan of those, you know, you know that salt water is healing. And so natural bodies of water, same type of deal. If you haven't listened to that episode where I talk about uh, the ocean water or even the Epsom salt or dead sea salt episode, go back and take a listen to those. Those are really great. Um, so that I'm looking forward to. The chlorine in the pool, um, you know, it can be very drying, but hell, we're all, most of us are already insanely dry anyway. So, and I think that can kind of be a little bit comparable to bleach baths. I've never taken a bleach bath. I don't intend to ever take a bleach bath. Got nothing against them, really. It's not really my cup of tea. I try to do things way not much more natural and whatnot. But um, again, it, they're probably so similar with the amount of chemicals, the pool, bleach bath, whatever. Um, and number one thing I'm really looking forward to is in the summer, although I definitely had big moments of struggle, those three months of June, July, and August here in the States, I felt significantly better. My mood was better, obviously, because the sun, it's just serotonin and dopamine going and you're just happier. You know, I'm now where I'm living right now, uh, you know, it's coming up to Thanksgiving and of November and it's getting very, very, very chilly. And I live in the part of the country where I experience all four seasons. And so the leaves are changing colors. It's definitely getting chilly. We're into jacket weather. And along with that comes like seasonal depression for a lot of people, right? It gets darker out earlier in the day. It's dark when you wake up in the morning. So blah, blah, blah. It feels like very blah. Um, so I'm really looking forward to a lot of vitamin D and vitamin C, S-E-A, ha, ha, ha. Uh, <laughs> but also vitamin C, um, Oh, by the way, so let me just back up for a second. So I didn't actually ever get those. If you listen to last week's episode about the IV infusion nutritional therapy, I was so bummed. I was supposed to go that day and they called me and they had to cancel the appointment. The nurse that had a call out. So I still haven't gotten that done yet, but stay tuned. I will keep you posted when that does happen. I have every intention, hopefully maybe even this week um, before I go to my trip, maybe I'll be able to get that and try that out. So anyway, um, I digress. So you know, there's so many people that have documented going on vacation, what that does for them with TSW, which to me brings up a couple of really good points. Number one, uh, you know, if you go on these tropical Caribbean type vacations, all those things I just mentioned, of course, they're going to be beneficial and helpful for you. The vitamin D, the sunlight, the elevated mood from just getting away from the daily grind or getting out of your bubble of discomfort and where you're living and just looking forward to something, getting excited about something. These are all things that are just proof that our mental state, our mindset, those are all critical components of healing. Like there's no negating that. Sorry, not sorry. That's just a fact. And it, But it also is something that I think we all need to make a note of, which is it's unrealistic to be able to go on vacations 
every other day or every month or every couple months for some people or whatever. So how do you take the parts of healing of a vacation or a holiday and bring them with you into your everyday life when you are, in fact, at home living regularly like you normally would? So a couple things I want to suggest to you on that are, number one, vitamin D. Yes, even if you live somewhere where it's really, really cold, go sitting on a chair or on a step or even in your car and le- exposing your face at least, if you can't expose your whole body, but you can expose your face to actual sunlight for at least five minutes, at least every day, that is going to help, okay? Um... Obviously, if you have listened for a while, you know that I do things like the red light therapy and phototherapy and infrared sauna. I love all these things, but none of those things are natural sunlight. So I do try to expose myself to the elements like every day. I fall short of that many times, but I try my best. So getting yourself, your body in, but obviously I'm not telling you to go wear a bikini in 30 degree weather and I mean unless you're into that kind of thing but uh I'm not I'm not suggesting you do that right um nothing wrong with that though I mean I do cryotherapy which is obviously indoors in a frozen like ice chamber thing for three minutes but uh, you know if you're into the cold therapy whether it's ice plunges ice baths cryotherapy I don't know I have people that I know that uh go to uh they 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 literally wear like tank top and shorts when it's snowing on the ground and they step barefoot in the snow and they do I anyway I'm here I go here I go again running away with the point so you get the idea so get some d vitamin d sunlight exposure every day okay if 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 anything at least just on your face on your face um second thing is your mood right you get excited you look forward to a vacation you are pumped up how do you do that? How do you pump yourself up when it's just a regular old day at home? What do you do? Well, for me, I like to move my body. And sometimes that's just blasting one of my favorite songs. A song is typically, what, two to three minutes. And I f- jump up and down or I shake out that energy in my arms and legs. Sometimes I'll like dance, have a little dance party. Sometimes by myself, sometimes with my son. Although now he's getting older and he thinks I'm so embarrassing. Um, but you get the idea. Um, that's one way to increase your energy. Another way is to do breath work. Another way is to go for a run or a walk or a jog movement. If you can tell there's a theme here, like that's, that's key. So although yes, it's not the same thing as looking forward to, oh my gosh, I'm going to Disney world. Oh my gosh, I'm going to a tropical vacation. Oh my gosh, I'm going whatever. What is something that gives you pure enjoyment and excitement? And it could be something as simple as, you know, like, ordering groceries to be delivered instead of you going to the store like that sounds stupid but something that gets you excited find something that is obviously you can't order groceries if that was your thing you can't do that every day but find something like movement like dance like running walking jogging something that gets you excited and absolutely elevates your mood and you'll get a similar effect as if you were to look forward to going on a vacation okay what's something else when you're on vacation you wear like cute outfits, right? You get excited. I mean, I'm not, I don't like to pack. I hate, I dread it. But when I'm there, I'm excited. Like I'm looking forward to wearing, um, you know, cute little short rompers or sundresses or whatever feminine, cute things that make me feel sexy. Now, obviously when we don't like what we see in the mirror, if we're going through a bad flare up, if we're uncomfortable, that's, that can be hard to do. But the point that I want you to take from this is I don't know about you, but I tend to, when I'm feeling blah, I'm feeling not myself, I'm uncomfortable with this situation that we're all in, I tend to just like let my appearance go um, for that day, that week, whatever. So I'll wear more sweats because they're comfy. Hell, I love good sweats, sweatpants, sweatshirt, love it, hoodies, yes, all the way, leggings, all for it. But every day I, I have to leave my house whether that's going to an appointment, whether that's taking my son to school. Um, You may not be in the position where you have to leave your house, but I want to encourage you to force yourself out of the house, if not every day, one or two days a week. And when you do that, try, don't, you don't have to, you don't have to dress up in a suit. You don't need to get all fancy. You don't need to do your hair necessarily, but pick one thing that will make you feel good about you. So I'll give you an example. Uh, A week ago, 
I wasn't feeling the greatest. Um, but I wanted to be comfy because I didn't want my clothes to feel tight and like itch me or bother me in any way. But I, instead of just like letting my hair air dry after I washed it, I blue dry it and I gave it a little curl. I like gave it a little wave. Just that tiny thing, even though yes, my face, I didn't love what my face was doing. My skin was doing. I didn't necessarily love the outfit I had on, but that little thing made me feel good. It made me feel good about me. And it wasn't the whole nine yards, right? It wasn't the makeup, the hair, the outfit, the shoes, the whatever, whatever. It was just the one thing. So do that one thing. Because when you go on vacation, you tend to try to, like, you look good, you look the part, you get all cute, and you like what you're wearing, and you feel good about yourself. So try to carry a piece of that into each day. All right? Um, I'm not reading anything, by the way. This is totally off the cuff um, for me. But there's... Okay, so what other things, let's think. What other things about vacation do do we do help help our healing process that we can take home with us and and take every day? You know, we have the clothes, we talked about the vitamin D, we talked about um what was the other one? Squirrel brain, ADHD over here. Um but another thing that we can talk about is we usually like the company we're going with. Now, if you're a solo traveler, more power to you. I have always wanted to do it. I've never done that. Um, I think it's awesome. But usually you like the people you're traveling with, right? Could be your spouse, your significant other, your best friend, family members, whatever. So what does that mean? That means that instead of isolating ourselves from the world, which is so easy to do in this god-awful situation we're in, because we don't like, we're not proud of ourselves, we feel yucky, we don't, you know, all, all the reasons why I don't need to list them. That means that you should at least every single week make it a point to either FaceTime or physically, even better, and what you should really aim for is physically see someone or some people that make you happy, that make you feel good about you, that you enjoy being around, that bring out the best in you, that are positive influences in you, with, in your life, Okay. That's another thing. And it's so important. Like, we are social creatures, right? Like, we are community creatures. We need one another. We are not supposed to be these isolated beings. And this awful condition of TSW can really make us become hermits, right? We want to hide from the world. We we feel like nobody gets us. We don't want to... We're miserable. We're in a bad mood. We're uncomfortable. There's a million and one reasons why you can justify not seeing somebody, a friend, a neighbor, a family member, whatever, but there's one huge reason why you need to, and that is for your mental sanity and your happiness. It's, and your healing. It's so important. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. So that's another one. I could probably list you a whole bunch more reasons. One other one I will say is the food, right? We go on vacation. We sometimes tend to indulge ourselves. Now, I'm not going to sit here and have every all my nutrition friends be like, don't say that. Don't tell them to have some cocktails and eat bad food and all that stuff. But what I will say is certain things bring us comfort. And sometimes that can be if you're, you know, culturally, I'm an Irish and Italian. I have descendants from there. And that's my heritage, my culture. Food, mealtime, bringing families and people together. That's a huge part of who I am. And sometimes food brings up positive emotions and feelings. So if there is a food that you're able to tolerate, you're able to eat, it's not going to cause massive inflammation more than you already got, let yourself enjoy that, okay? Okay. So those are just some things off the top of my head that I'm thinking that really, really help. The other thing is you know that you can't maybe plan a vacation every couple times a year or as much as you might want. But getting excited about when you are really, truly healed from this terrible freaking thing. Make a list of all the places that you do want a vacation to. That you, and, and more than that, go a step further. And if you're a journaler and you like to write things, I highly suggest you do this. Write a list of all the places that you want to go to. Like a bucket list thing. But all, even, even if it's not all of them, three, four, five places that you want to see. Places in this world you want to see and you want to go to. I want you to write them as if you are already there. And this is a really powerful visual, visualization thing. This is a manifestation thing. This is how you make thoughts become things. All right. Whether you believe in this stuff or not, regard, it doesn't matter. It's just doing this exercise itself is going to make you feel good and feel better. Write as if you're there. What's it going to feel like 
you walking the streets of Italy and TSW is of the past. It is behind you now. You are healed and you're going and you're listening to beautiful music. You're hearing the sound of all the people walking the streets. Maybe it's you sitting outside at a cafe having gelato or something like that. What is that going to feel like? What are you going to think? How are, what is, what's going to be going through your head? Write that down. Maybe you're, maybe a place you want to visit is, we'll go stay with the islands. Maybe you want to go to Hawaii. Okay. What are you going to wear that you're not able to wear right now? What's your day going to look like when you're in Maui, Hawaii? You're looking at the clear blue water. You are looking at the palm trees and the white sand beaches and your toes are in the sand and you're feeling them and there's no irritation and you're not itchy. And you look in the mirror before you go out to dinner, maybe uh, maybe a Hawaiian luau and you have this adorable, you're a guy and you got this great Hawaiian button down shirt or you're this girl and you've got this like beautiful flowy sundress and you look in the mirror and you are like, looking at yourself and appreciating every single every single centimeter of skin that you see how beautiful you are how amazing that feels that's another huge huge healing tool so much so that i want to encourage you to carry around look at pictures of yourself when you were not going through tsw pictures where you really feel confident and sexy and proud of yourself and not in a vanity way but in a really like you really are in awe of your body and, and not just your appearance, but like how you were, how you felt about yourself in that moment. Don't look at that like, oh, that's of the past and woe is me. And oh my God, I'm so far from looking like that. And my God, look at me now. I look so much worse. I feel so much worse. It's all, don't go there and do that. That just keeps you where you are. If you're going to look at photos of yourself in the past, look at them with such excitement that I loved me then. I love me now. I have so much gratitude and appreciation for how much my body is working for me and healing every single day. And look at what I get to look forward to. I'm going to not only be able to look and feel just like my old self again, but now I have a whole nother layer of accomplishment, of of, of victory, of a huge layer of my story, a huge way I can impact people. These are all things you, this, this are, these are just true. And you have to start really watching the words you say, what you put in your mind, and all that jazz. So I hope this episode was eye-opening, helpful. I can't wait to report back after my trip. I'll let you know how my skin was, how I felt mentally, all the things. I will tell you all of it. If you can book a trip, even if it's like a day trip somewhere, you can get in the car and drive somewhere, try to give yourself the gift of getting away. Um, if you can. And if you can't, bring the vacation home to you. Play some tropical music. Maybe make a night out of it. Even if it's you yourself alone, love yourself. Appreciate yourself. Play some Hawaiian tropical music. Dress up for you and yourself. Go on a date with yourself. I sound, It sounds silly. I've done it though. And I actually love it. <laughs> it was actually great. Know the difference between being alone and lonely. When you can really love the crap out of yourself the good, the bad, and the ugly, healing absolutely starts to go much faster. That is a guarantee. All right. Love you so much. See you on the next episode. I appreciate you for being here. Thanks for listening. Please remember to subscribe and leave feedback. With your help, we can spread awareness together. So please share the show with anyone you know who may be struggling with a medical condition and using steroids to treat it. And be sure to check out the blog for helpful resources to aid you along your TSW journey at tswjourneytohealing.com.